One of the interesting things that we should notice about lists is the fact that a list is a sequential collection of any type of Python object. What that means is that a list can actually contain another list as one of its items. For example, if I were to create a variable, let's say my list, as a reference to a Python list, we could have this list consist of, say, an integer, a Boolean value, and maybe now we'd actually have another list. We could have a list of the first three even integers. And then maybe a fourth item could be the floating, or maybe the string cat. And then maybe we could finish it off with the floating point number 34.5. That list consists of five things. But when you look at it, the third item, the index position two item of that list, is actually another list. If I check the length of my list, we see that in fact there are five things. But now we have to be careful because there is structure within structure. We call this a nested list, a list that is nested inside of another list. Now what's interesting about nested lists is that although they may look a little complicated at first, the use of a nested list is no different than any other list. All of the same operations, all of the same kinds of functionality still work. So for example, if I want to access the first item of my main list, I would say my list indexed by zero because the first item is at position zero and I would get the value 23. If I wanted to access the sublist, that is the nested list, I would do the same thing. My list indexed by, but now in this case, it's going to be the item at position two. The zeroth item is 23, the item at position one is true, and the item at position two is the sublist or the list two, four, six. And so just because the sublist has structure doesn't mean that we can't simply use all the uh, accessing capability that we've learned before. And in fact, it could also be that we use this as part of a slicing operation. So I could say I would like to slice my list from position one up to but not including position four and I would get the list that starts with true, ends with cat, where the sublist 246 is the middle item. So sublists act like any other item. Now one question that comes up is so how do I access items that are within the nested structure? Well if I know that the nested list is the item at position 2, then I can simply use that as the starting point for another indexing operation. So my list indexed by 2 refers to the list, the list of even numbers in this case, and if I want to know what is the first item in that list, I can simply use another index and it returns the value 2. Let's go back and look at this more carefully. My list is the reference to the entire list. Indexed by 2 means I want to access the item that is at position 2 in the original list. Well, that happens to be a sublist containing 2, 4, and 6. Once I have access to that sublist, now indexing that by position 0 means that I want to access the first item in that sublist. When we have nested lists and we want to access items in those nested lists, the kind of indexing structure we build is simply one that we read from left to right. The original list, an item in that list, and then an item in, in this case, the sublist or in the nested structure. Now, one thing to think about here is that this also works with other kinds of nested structures. So, for example, if we have a string inside of a list, notice the word cat is actually a sequential structure. It happens to be in position four or in position three in our original list. And so if I say my list indexed by three, it returns the value cat. 
If I wanted to access the first letter of that string, I can do the same thing as I did before. My list indexed by three, indexed at position zero, would just give me the character C. And so nested structures, lists inside of lists, can also infer the kinds of properties that we might have for, say, lists of strings. And so if I had a word list, which consisted of, say, a list of strings, then I could access items from the individual strings in that list by using this same kind of indexing structure. The first word in the list, the first character in that word, would give me the, ca the uh, character C. If I wanted to process those words individually, I could access them at, at one level. If I wanted to process characters within those words, I could process them at another level. So lists of lists, lists of strings, any kind of sequential sort of nesting structure inside of structure, the same rules apply for the basic operations that we have for sequence.